Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. I'm not the kind of guy who thinks that the world is coming to an end. As a matter of fact, I argue that here in 2018, humanity is better off than we ever were. Sure, the 24 hours news cycle and internet alarmists will try to convince you otherwise in order to sell more of their sensational garbage. I truly believe that we have a bright future ahead of us. The only thing that's really stopping us is, well, AI. Automation will give us an industrial revolution that we can't even begin to understand. It's, it's possible that a huge amount of jobs will be removed from the economy and the definition of employment and work will drastically change. The world is rapidly changing. Who thought that being a YouTuber could actually be a real job? Yet still, we have some of the smartest minds on our planet warning us against the proliferation of so-called unshackled AI. Bill Gates talked about it, Elon Musk did too, and so did Stephen Hawking, before he was murdered by a T-800. It scares me that the man who basically invented the personal computer along with a rocket ship salesman and the first man who uploaded his consciousness into a computer all have come to the same conclusion that AI, if approached irresponsibly, could have terrible consequences for humanity. And when I say irresponsible, I mean look at the world today where we're weaponizing automated platforms and then allowing them to function free of human command. It's basically the backstory of every Hollywood movie where robots take over. And it's being driven in a similar way to the nuclear arms development during and before the Cold War. Everyone knows it's wrong, but they're doing it anyway because they're afraid that their neighbor is doing it as well. And if you still aren't concerned about the dangers of AI, let me just remind you this. That psychopath Mark Zuckerberg is playing around with AI development the same way he played around with all of our personal information. Now maybe I'm being a little bit hyperbolic. Maybe I just grew up watching movies about AI taking over and killing mankind. It's a very common trope. But there is one sci-fi franchise that doesn't have this problem. Star Wars. Droids and Star Wars come in all different types and forms, but for some reason they've never taken over and cleansed the galaxy of organic life. Why is that and what can we learn from them? Well, in both Legends and Canon, Star Wars plays around with the idea of a sentient AI race that is hostile to all organic life forms. In Legends, the Yuzang Vong wage war against two races of machines which leads to the destruction of their entire galaxy. This is more like your standard AI race starts reproducing and becoming an unstoppable force type scenario. It's also what drove the Yuzang Bong to become insane and religious zealots. But in canon, nothing as bad as that has happened yet. Throughout the history of Star Wars from the Old Republic to the New Republic, droids have always been a part of the servant class. They mainly did jobs that organic individuals didn't want to. This included dangerous, heavy industrial jobs, menial service jobs, and security jobs. Droids tended to make less mistakes than organics and were a lot cheaper to hire and maintain. Having an organic servant or a driver was a sign that you were extremely wealthy. Most of these droids were intelligent and some were even sentient, but their behavior was controlled by their programming and droids were also routinely given memory wipes. Seems a bit beat up. You want a new one? Not on your life. That little droid and I have been through a lot together. You okay, R2? Good. And that is perhaps one of the main reasons why droids never were able to start an uprising. When droids weren't given memory wipes, they oftentimes developed glitches and even personalities. The Astromech R2-D2 and Chopper were example of droids who never had their memories wiped. They both had unique personalities and were quite unpredictable and great at solving problems. We also had droids like L3 who over time became obsessed with droid activism and equality. L3 was more of a moderate droid activist. She believed that memory wipes were unethical and destroyed a droid's personality. She was also against the use of restraining bolts on droids. Restraining bolts were another good way of controlling droids. Physically bolted onto a droid, these devices forced droids to be obedient and not to go against the wishes of their master. It was a good way to keep droids in their place. But at the end of the day, L3 was harmless. She wasn't against organics and she had many organic friends like Lando. But there were more extreme groups who didn't share her views. You had organizations like the Droid Gotra. Founded by Clone War droid veterans on Coruscant, this organization fought for droid emancipation at any cost. While they were not ideologically against organics, they wouldn't hesitate in destroying anyone who got in their way. Early on, the droid Gotra mainly took enforcer jobs for the various mafias in the Coruscant underworld to make money, but eventually they expanded their network to other planets like Corellia. Most people considered the droid Gotra a terrorist organization. But lastly, you had an even more extreme organization like the Blood and Wire Cult. They believed that droids were the pinnacle of evolution and that humans and other life forms were basically unnecessary and impure. Throw in a religious flair and you had a genuinely dangerous organization. Their sort of leader, Fizzin Gore, had a machine known as the Phalanx Redux Transmitter. With this device, he could force all the droids in the galaxy to go on a bloody rampage of organics. 
It was later noted by Lando had Fizz and Gore been successful, places like his Cloud City would have no chance against a huge droid uprising because of the large amount of droids on that city. But of course, Cloud City was more droid-friendly than most places. In the years after the Clone Wars, anti-droid sentiment still remained in many parts of the galaxy. This was due to the atrocities committed by the Separatist droid army. Luckily, the droid army was mainly made up of poorly built battle droids that were relatively harmless on their own. The earlier models even were controlled through a central command structure which made them very easy to deactivate all at once. There were more specialized droids and commando units that were far deadlier, but these droids were programmed to receive routine memory wipes and were programmed to serve their masters. It wasn't until after the war when their organic masters fled or died that these droids began developing their own personalities. Yet still, their programming was so deeply ingrained that many of these droids continued guarding their bases many years after the war ended. Battle droids lacked creativity and innovation, which made them ultimately only as dangerous as their master let them be. The more dangerous robots were the more creative ones, like L3. She managed to construct a series of robots that looked just like her and could also build more units that looked like her. The ability for robots to procreate and repair themselves is where the true danger lies. But such modifications were generally frowned upon by society. The Clone Wars also showed us that a smaller group of well-trained organics were much more capable on the battlefield than droids. The real strength of droids lay in their cheap manufacturing costs in large numbers. But even then, the weapons like ion cannons had the ability to disable a huge amount of droids at once without harming any organics. Star Wars technology evolved in a strange way. Yet extremely advanced things like hyperdrives reflect their shields and planet-sized weapons, but at the same time, the majority of control systems were still analog and required a physical connection. This meant it was very hard for droids to hack into military systems and take over physical assets. And even though larger ships had computer brains to help with calculations and navigation, they always needed human input to steer themselves. Although some droids were specialized in piloting ships, they were oftentimes inferior to their human counterparts. For the most part in the Star Wars galaxy, droids were at the same level as organics, which made them no more of a threat than any other race of beings. At the end of the day, humans created machines to serve them, and that's how it should be. Nice to have humanity first. Thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.